Inhaled anticholinergics. Inhaled anticholinergics work by blocking the action of acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that induces bronchoconstriction and mucus secretion in the airway. By blocking acetylcholine, inhaled anticholinergics promote bronchodilation and decrease mucus secretion. Examples of inhaled anticholinergics include ipratropium and tiotropium. Ipratropium, also known as atrovent, is an oral inhalation medication given via an inhaler. It is contraindicated in those with peanut allergy because it contains soy lecithin, which is in the same plant family as peanuts. Ipratropium can be used in combination with albuterol. It is called duoneb, which is given via a nebulizer. A nebulizer turns medications into fine liquid mist particles that can be breathed in through the nose or mouth into the lungs. Teotropium, also known as spiriva, is a capsule that is placed inside an inhaler device, and the capsule is pierced, allowing the patient to inhale its content. Side effects. As you probably remember, anticholinergics have a drying effect. When inhaled, they can inhibit salivation and cause dry mouth, a bitter taste, and throat or nasal irritation. Patients can use sugar-free candies or gum to alleviate dry mouth and increase fluid intake. Time for study buddy review. I will be reviewing the topic with you by asking you questions with pauses in between. It's like a virtual study buddy and flashcards for your ears. Okay, let's begin. Inhaled anticholinergics. What are anticholinergics? Anticholinergics are a class of medication that block the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. What effect does acetylcholine have on the respiratory system? Yes, acetylcholine acts on the smooth muscles of the airway and causes bronchoconstriction and increased mucus secretion. By blocking acetylcholine, anticholinergics promote bronchodilation and decreased mucus secretion. What are some examples of inhaled anticholinergics you can think of? Yes, teotropium, better known as spiriva, and ipratropium, also known as atrovent, are the most common ones. Note that they both end with the suffix p-i-u-m. Okay, let's talk about ipratropium, or atrovent. Atrovent is contraindicated in those with allergy to what? That's right. Atrovent is contraindicated in those with peanut allergy because it contains soy lecithin, which is in the same plant family as peanuts. Atrovent can be combined with which respiratory medication and is known as duoneb? Good job. Duoneb is a combination of both atrovent and albuterol, and it is usually given via a nebulizer in the hospital. What is a nebulizer again? Yes. A nebulizer turns a liquid medication into aerosol that can be inhaled through the nose or mouth. Let's talk about teotropium, also known as what? Yes, also known as spiriva. Spiriva is also given via an inhaler device that is a bit different than regular inhalers. What do you have to do first before inhaling the medication? That's right. Spiriva comes in capsules and with an inhaler device. A capsule is placed inside the inhaler and is pierced, allowing the patient to inhale its content. Let's move on to side effects. What are some side effects you can think of? Yes, as you may remember, anticholinergics have a drying effect. When anticholinergic is taken systemically, such as intravenously or orally, it can lead to dry mouth, tachycardia, urinary retention, constipation, as well as visual and neurologic disturbances such as confusion. So when anticholinergics are inhaled, you can expect to see dry mouth, bitter taste, throat or nasal irritation, in which case you can encourage patients to use sugar-free candies or gum to alleviate dry mouth and increase fluid intake. You did a great job. Like and comment if you want to see more Study Buddy series. See you next time.